Power update. Power update. Yeah, that was pretty cringe. Anyways, uh, his administrative leave got extended again, and the hearings are supposed to start on Monday this time. So I, I don't really fucking know what they're doing at this point, but hey, fucking more power to you, I suppose. But um, yeah, administrative leave, yeah, has been extended for one week. Who knows how long this trial is going to go? Who even knows if they don't come to a fucking conclusion or some kind of a settlement between now and the beginning of the trial? But it should just be we're extending his administrative leave, so you have to stop issuing these absolutely redundant press releases on a bi weekly basis at this point. And he's going to be on administrative leave until this issue is resolved. How about that? Just do us all a favor. Just be concise and get to the point because doing the same thing over and over again, it just kind of continues to drag stupid stuff up. And speaking of which, we kind of have two new developments here. Okay, so the Washington Post, which you all know is probably a beacon of truth, honesty, impartiality. Yeah, no, I can't even barely say it with a straight face. They came in and they found out that Bauer had a protective order against him in Ohio stemming from an altercation in 2017, but then it was filed earlier in 2020. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what we got here. I did some pre-reading on this one. And if you think that Lindsay Hill's claims are fucking flimsy, this bitch right here, she swoops in from out of nowhere with just even weaker shit. That can't be proven because Washington Post, instead of, you know, citing any of their sources, uh, they're just playing this one extremely close to the chest and they just want to smear Trevor Bauer. It seems to be the cause du jour lately over the past couple of months, so they figured, hey, why not fucking hop on the bandwagon? Trevor Bauer currently on administrative leave from the Los Angeles Dodgers as he faces investigation he sexually assaulted a woman earlier this year, faced a previous order of protection filed by an Ohio woman in 2020 according to a published report. But you'll never find that fucking order because it's all expunged and it's all sealed right now. Interesting, very interesting, in a series of events that partially mirror, partially, partially. The order of protection filed against Bauer in Pasadena earlier this year, the Washington Post reported that a woman alleged Bauer choked her without her consent, interesting, and injured her while they had sex in 2017, and then was so traumatized by the event, had to wait until 2020 to file the order of protection when he was no longer in Ohio. Okay, okay and proceeded to send her threatening messages via text in or and social media. The protective order obtained by the Post has remained sealed while the police report detailing a 2017 incident in which the woman showed police injuries to her eyes have been expunged. So we can't even check any of that stuff. We're just going to have to go on the second, third hand information that was uh, dug up by the Washington Post. Cool. Great. Bauer, then 26, was pitching for Cleveland in August 2017 when the police were summoned to his apartment, according to the expunged police report obtained by the Post. The report said that Bauer complained the woman tried to physically harm him. Okay. Well, the woman showed officers pictures of injuries, as she said, were sustained. Pictures of injuries. Very important detail right there. Nothing that could be corroborated at the time except for what she was doing to Bauer, which is another thing that goes terribly, terribly underreported. Domestic abuse when the woman does something against the man. Obviously, he's a big, strong pitcher, okay? If he wanted to throw this bitch around, if she was doing something fucking sideways, he could definitely do it. That is within his capabilities of things he can do. But there are many anecdotal pieces of evidence that are out there of different altercations that people have had where a woman will, you know, use a lamp, use a frying pan, use fucking cowboy boots to beat up a guy. That shit happened. And then it gets laughed off by the police department. Charges can be filed, they can be attempted to be filed, but <laughs> you're a man and she's just a little tiny woman. And she has pictures of things that you might have done before? Exactly. Another one of these situations, but instead, everything that I'm seeing right now when I'm trying to do some research about what the fuck is happening with this trial. It was supposed to start two fucking weeks ago, but this bitch couldn't get her fucking evidence in order, in order to start the trial on time. So now it's supposed to start on Monday, what would that be? The 16th? Okay, okay. But let's see how this one wrapped up because, yeah, it just um, never really materialized. The report says that the woman was arrested for underage drinking. 
Okay, that doesn't mean he was fucking somebody who was underage. Just the drinking age is 21, so. Really fucked up situation. Uh, up here in Canada, in Alberta, the drinking age and the age of consent is... Actually, no, what? Age of consent, I think, is 16 or something like that. I'm not a pedophile or anything. I just... That's what it is, I think. And the age of drinking is 18. And I think in Ohio, age of consent is 16 and then drinking age is 21. So yeah, she could have been 18, 19, 20. But again, she has a criminal record, but nobody's going to end up reading that far into it. According to the police report, the Post obtained, the Washington Post, not the good one, not the New York Post, also obtained photos of bruises the woman said she sustained when he struck her without her consent during a 2018 encounter. Okay, but what got filed out of those, okay? So the police were called, but she had pictures of something from a while ago, and then had more pictures. If the police get called on some fucking hosebag that is fucking somebody, and they're not in a serious relationship or anything, do you think he's coming back for seconds? Bauer, well, if any of this is true, obviously they had some kind of a fucking relationship to begin with. Like I've stated since the outset, he isn't exactly the best judge of character when it comes to people he likes to drop loads on. And you think that if he ran amok of this, and it's weird because never heard fucking word one about this before, but all of a sudden when everything starts kicking off, ooh, the Washington Post wants to do investigative journalism on this one, on somebody who has been a Trump supporter, somebody who doesn't follow the fucking MLB company line. It's very weird how selectively they like to do a little bit of digging, but anyways, we'll continue on. The woman was arrested, yes, for underage drinking, and Cleveland traded Bauer to Cincinnati. Yeah, in July of 2019, he won the Cy Young Award, yeah, award last year. The woman filed a protective order in June 2020, years after any accusations had come up from this situation. Very, very concerning timing. Which, according to the Post, came after Bauer sent her threatening messages. Can you corroborate any of these? Including one stating, I don't feel like spending time in jail for killing someone. And that's what would happen if I saw you again. Not feeling like spending time in jail for killing someone? I feel that on a consistent basis. How is that a threat? Not a threat. Press, er, pass it through any sort of fucking legitimate test. The Brandenburg test? Go ahead. Go for it. It won't pass. It won't pass. That's not a threat. You see shittier fucking comments on YouTube or Twitter. Bauer and his attorneys have denied the allegations. Bauer tweeting a statement that said the woman was creating a false narrative. Imagine that. And that she continued to contact him in subsequent years after the encounter in question. Again, this guy must be just a fucking tremendous fuck if these bitches, these crazy hoes that he keeps pulling, still need that fucking right hook. Statement from Bauer's attorney, John Fel... Yeah, Federolf, whatever. And Rachel Luba, who's not his attorney, that's his agent. Weird. Asshole with a tiny YouTube channel and manages to get, you know, proper designations for people, correct? Whatever. Uh, says the woman raised the specter of the protective order as a means to threaten and extort money from Bauer, demanding $3.4 million for her to remain silent. Imagine that. Imagine that. Filing a protective order years after everything goes on, fabricating for all intents and purposes. There's no way to say for sure that Bauer came up with any of those statements. That doesn't seem to coincide with anything else that's going on. Nothing that we know of right now. Maybe the Washington Post will pull something out of their ass that can show any kind of a pattern of threatening messages after the fact. There just, you know, hasn't been anything so far. It's just, once again, now it just seems like dogpiling. Are there going to be more hoes coming out of the woodwork? I don't doubt it. I don't foresee it because this one took a while to come along and it took a third party to come out with this. Mostly because just like Lindsay Hill's protective order, this one just seems totally politically motivated. This one seems like an attempt to, for a shakedown. Oh, but you know, however, emails obtained by the Post indicate that one of Bauer's attorneys who first raised the specter of a monetary settlement, okay? Probably asked, how much would it take for you to fucking go away? Because this is how this shit works out. This is exactly what Hill wants as well, okay? She just wants some money to fucking go away. He just signed, like it continues to say down here, a $102 million three-year contract. He gets paid over 30 some odd million dollars. It continues to scale up over the three years anyways. But he's getting a lot of fucking cash. These bitches want to cash in. All of that stuff happened in 2017, 2018. We don't even know if he did it. Are there any court documents? No. Did it go any farther than just a police report? No. It's because there was nothing that could actually link him to that crazy hoe. But again, I also have my concerns, sizable concerns about this upcoming trial. The hearing of the order has been delayed multiple times as attorneys for Bauer and the woman receive new evidence. 
How is there new evidence at this point? And it's always coming from one side, but this is just a reprint from the USA Today, and they like to pay gate all of their stuff, and you, it'll be a cold day in hell before they get a red cent from me. But it is expected to move forward in the next couple of days. Apparently Monday, fingers crossed. Kendra Barkoff, spokesperson for the Ohio woman. It's amazing how somebody who wants to, once again, remain anonymous, but still want to file a restraining order that he has no contact with years into the fucking, f after the fact, and has a spokesperson, but, uh, oh, I had no interest in coming forward about expressing her, her experience as she feared the possible consequences of doing so, but still, but still, wait until all this stuff kicked off, and then you filed the restraining order, you filed the protective order, it's very weird timing. I don't believe a word you're saying. But then this kind of takes another little twist as well. Okay, so this is a statement from Joseph Darwall, the woman's attorney. So she has a spokesperson and an attorney. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but those should be giant, giant red flags. However, once the post, post reached out for comment regarding documents they received from third parties, the post received police documents from third parties about something that somebody else had to do digging about regarding Bauer that really didn't have any sort of evidence-based foundation. You can see where we're going here. This is becoming even more of a smear job than I possibly could have thought at the outset of this. She was left with no other choice but to come forward and confirm the documents they received. Release your fucking name. How about that? How about that? If you believe in all this stuff so much, if you have all the pictures of things that definitely happened at the time, and that all of a sudden, years later, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the Dodgers were about to have a homestand or just go on the road and then you might be close proximity to them and you're just literally shaking at home. Maybe that's what spurned all of this on. Who knows? I guess we're going to have to see, wait Monday, see if there's actually a trial that happens or if it just continues to get bogged down in more new evidence that continues to just magically show up. Whatever. I think Bauer's getting smeared in this one. You guys in the comment section, you guys have been really good about just asking very probing questions and it's really interesting to see the thought process of a bunch of people that are going on back and forth and then some retards who are trying to simp for MLB and the Dodgers. Yeah. I love baseball. I'm a fan of the Dodgers, but what they've done to Bauer is inexcusable. He's going to lose this year for sure. I, I don't see him coming back. I just really hope he has a career after all of this stuff is done. With that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Catch y'all later.